Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge, where people tell us their best stories on when they got revenge on someone or something they didn't like. If you're new around here, please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video, but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some pro revenge stories. Problem Neighbor Feeding Feral Pigeons Stink Bombs A tough response, but it worked. I live in a 10 story apartment building in a dense part of a city with numerous other tall complexes, but also a number of old single family homes. One such home abuts my building, directly under my 8th floor apartment. The long time owner has had a pigeon coop in his backyard for years. The birds smell and are a nuisance, but no big deal. Then, about 6 months ago, the owner took it upon himself to dump 20 pounds of bird seeds in his backyard daily, attracting 200 to 250 city pigeons. They are feral that lived in a nearby park, but once the feeding started, they ended up hanging out my neighbour's roof most of the day. Every day. Complaints to him to desist were fruitless. Numerous neighbours also complained to city officials, but they were useless. Animal rights activists on our city council, who halted a pigeon control program a few years back as cruelty to animals, are very pro-animal. They refuse to take action under the pretext that there is no such sort of nuisance law the city could use in this case. The smell from pigeon poop in his yard progressively got worse, and the birds started roosting on our property and crapping on parked cars. Several disgruntled neighbours, including me, pondered a solution for months. A neighbour and I arrived at a solution, artificially escalating the nuisance level of the problem, specifically the bird reek so the city can no longer ignore the nuisance. It had to be logical, secretive and calibrated. Someone couldn't throw dog poop onto his property and expect an outcome. Long story short, we concocted an odorous slurry. Using my 8th floor balcony directly over the pigeon lover's back backyard, I gave it a gradually increasing midnight sprinkling of slurry which disappeared into the grass in his messy backyard. Within one week, the increased odour emanating from his property reached one and a half blocks away. Suddenly, the problem was resolved. We did not see the official action, but word was that several prominent businessmen who own a restaurant down the street complained to the mayor about the stench. The city took action. The guy is now only allowed to keep about 15 pigeons in coops, no more feeding the ferals. An unorthodox solution to a problem that needed to be dealt with. Wow, you gotta give huge props to these guys because they sacrificed themselves by making it smell even worse for a short amount of time, all for the revenge and that's just perfect. Mean Lady Hates Everyone especially us. We buy her house after she failed to pay her debt. The house we live in was built at the same time as hers. My parents were often at the construction site and help if they can. The strange lady was nice to us at the beginning, but that changed soon. This happened around Christmas 2017. We have a neighbour who is very unpopular in our neighbourhood. She is well known for harassing people who use the public path at the left side of her house. The path is one out of three to reach the public playground behind her house. If someone uses the path, she would scream at them that this is her path on her private property, which is wrong. Sometimes she would close the path with a red and white plastic chain and won't let anyone use the path. She would scream at kids on the playground when they were loud, at daytime. She always has her shutters almost down so she can stalk the people on the street and stay unseen. 
If some kid's ball landed in her garden, she would bring it to the kids and destroy it with a knife right in front of them. All kids knew this and would run by her house if they wanted to go on the playground. When the neighbor's kids were playing in the winter outside in the snow, she would call the CPS equivalent in my country and tell them they were locked outside by their parents as a punishment. If someone walked by their house at night, she would often call the police due to a noise complaint. She was known by everyone in our neighborhood as the witch. But she hated my family in particular. We lived right beside her house. Our houses shared one wall. When me and my sister were young, we would use the swing in our garden or jump on our trampoline. She would regularly file noise complaints and often harass me and my sister when we were alone in our garden. If my parents heard her screaming swear words at us from the first floor of her house, they would yell back. If me or my sister walked on the path by her house, she would scream at us. We used the path daily on our way to school. One time, when I came home from school, she was in her car with the trunk on the sidewalk. When I walked by the back of her car, she howled the engine and the dark exhaust hit me. Almost every night she would hit the shared wall with something to wake us up. Sometimes she rang on our door and tried to make us go to other neighbours to complain about small things. We often had lawsuits with her. One time because her trees grew two metres over the border. Another time because she built a fence by sticking bamboo mats in the dirt and tearing it down the next day and telling the police we destroyed her wooden fence. We won all lawsuits against her because my uncle, he's teaching law school, gave us good advice on how to deal with her and named lawyers he knew were good. She never paid the workers who repaired things at her house and the electrical and water bills. When her old car broke down, she didn't pay the car mechanic and never got her car back. She was in debt and had a mortgage on her house. When the foreclosure came, we were at the court and bought her house. She was with us in the courtroom when the auction was and tried to buy her own house but wasn't allowed because she couldn't provide proof that she has enough money. We bought her house where she lived for 20 plus years in front of her. We bought it because my parents were at the construction of her house and knew the workers did a great job at building it. We renovated it when she left. We repainted all rooms, renewed the insulation and put everywhere where no tiles were new wooden floor. My grandparents will be moving into her old house this fall. Some people just don't have much to do, do they? <laughs> they just stand there looking through their blinds and be like, oh, who can I shout at today? Force me to quit? Fine, let me collapse your whole organization. So about three years ago, I was asked by a friend called Ash to help out a wheelchair bound disabled chap called Gary who wanted to go swimming but none of his care staff, apart from my friend, were willing to take him. I agreed because I've worked in care at all levels previously, so I was fine with helping a chap out. I was there a month or so before they asked if I was willing to take on actual shifts there. I was so started very part time initially. The shifts were a waking night slash sleep from 11 o'clock till 12 the next day, and a single four hour shift between 3pm and 7pm. I was given a couple of day shifts and I was tasked with picking up any shifts because of holidays or illness by other staff members. He had four other staff, my friend Ash, a dude called Jake, one called Craig and the most problematic Lisa. Lisa picked up one sleep per week and a couple of day shifts. The problem is that she was a raging alcoholic who just didn't come to work if she wanted to go out drinking instead. But Gary, the disabled chap, fancied her a bit and she was very touchy feely with him, I think to manipulate him as he's very lonely. 
Jake wouldn't work a weekend and would only do two sleeps. Plus, Jake didn't like doing any housework and he didn't like doing personal care because he thought it was gross. Craig would only work three sleeps and never a day shift. He didn't believe he should have to do any of the housework at all. He wouldn't even make a bed. Things were changed in the scheme to suit Craig. Hoovers had to be emptied and cleaned every time you used it. No sheets were kept on the carer's bed as Craig didn't think he should change them. Gary had to be put in his PJs by the day staff as Craig didn't want to do that either. Again, like I say, nobody was willing to take Gary swimming and now I knew why. Please just allow yourself a moment to understand that two staff members had at least 65% of the allotted hours, but would not do any housework or personal care. Craig has worked this job for a decade and made at least £1,800 every month without fail, but without having to do any work. And for half the week, he just has entire days to do nothing. Easy money. These three staff members are seemingly bulletproof and nothing they do gets them dismissed. Lisa had at this point been suspended three times during my tenure for being drunk and abusive on duty. At one point, she was suspended for 10 weeks while they let everything blow over. So I get taken on to mainly make up for the fact his mother is off on the sick as she has had surgery on her knee. But about a year ago or so, I became aware that his mother is being paid a full wage every month but without statutory sick pay being noted on her payslip. I immediately know what's up. Gary's mother is in control of his account that the local authority pays money into that he then pays his care staff from. I also find out that Gary is also using this account to fund his lifestyle including adult chat rooms, clothes, and gifts for his staff. He is quite blatant about it, laughs about it often. I find this really galling because I pay tax to my local authority every month, like every family in the UK, and that pays for everything in my area, including social care. So, I report this to the local authority and get absolutely no joy. Very disappointed in this, I decide to continue working there but save all the evidence I can for the future. I also convince him to keep a handover book for the staff to note what their activities were that day so anyone curious can track what things staff are and aren't doing. Anyway, up until last week, I was working for him for about 30 hours a week and handling a lot of the day-to-day -day problems. But, I get a text from his mother saying she is returning to work the following week, so my services will be reduced to a single 4 hour shift once a fortnight. I said thank you, but no thank you, and I worked till my final paycheck and called it quits. Now, as a last ditch attempt to get someone to listen, I sent a lengthy email to the emergency care team at the adult care service, where I detailed absolutely everything. I got interest, and today, someone came out to interview me. They were incredibly interested in what I had to say and confirmed my initial email kickstarted an investigation into Gary's situation. They told me they had been building a case against this for a while and that it stretches back the entire 20 years he has been able to pay for his own care. I had documented that his mother had paid for herself working 9 hours every Sunday, Monday and Tuesday for every month that I had worked there. She had submitted timesheets herself to the local authority that documented this. She had also submitted the timesheets to the council that showed the same days that she was apparently working, she had arranged for other staff to work them, namely me and two others. She had also sent messages to me that documented her communicating with me to continue to cover her shifts. The handover book documented what had been done that day. She never wrote in it, obviously. 
Medication charts at the property documented who gave him medication that day. She never signed it. So yesterday morning, Gary and his mother were called to the council to explain to them why his entire contingency fund was gone. This was meant to pay for sick pay, maternity pay and any other unforeseen monetary problems he may encounter. There was nothing left. Gary admitted some guilt and cut them a cheque for £5,000 on the spot. This money was something he came into recently after his grandfather had died. This was a humongous admission of guilt. Then, when the social worker met Gary at his address yesterday, and after some probing, he admitted that yes, he was aware of the conspiracy that he and his mother operated, and yes, he was paying her a full wage every month knowing that she was not working. Again, jackpot for that social working and an even bigger admission of guilt. The social worker was meant to then interview the mother, but at that point she knew it was knowingly criminal and that he and his mother had entered a criminal conspiracy to defraud the council over a potential 20 year period to the tune of a quarter of a million pounds at least. She contacted the police and left them to arrest the mother and interview her. I was told I will be contacted in due course to be interviewed by the police, as would all the other staff. I was also told that Gary would no longer be in control of his staffing at all, and there is no way that the other staff members would be taken on by the care organisation that would have to be brought in to run his care. The only other person who would interview for his position would be my buddy Ash, as he had a faultless record. I'm jobless at the moment, but hey, I take a foreign holiday next week and I'll put in the groundwork in to get a new job for when I arrive home. It's always good to see people that abuse the system, especially because this one's from the UK and people pay a lot of money towards taxes and stuff that actually fund this. And when someone's abusing it like that, they deserve to get pro-revenged on, so props to them. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.